All right, this is the Algebra 1 practice ELC test number 2, actually. Uh, the question says, which values of x, values, that should kind of give it away that we're looking for two answers, values of x make the equation true. Okay, well now, this is pretty much one of those wonderful factoring problems, okay? You have something that's squared, so that also should let you know that that's about how many answers you should have. You should have two, okay? When you're trying to factor this, though, your first step, whenever you're factoring, is always trying to figure out what number, or try to take out a greatest common factor and figure out which number can go into every single one of these numbers, okay? Well, a good starting point is to see if this first number will go into every single one of these. And by go into every single one of those, I mean divide by, okay? So if I pulled out a 9 from every single one of these, this would become x squared, because 9 divided by 9 is 1, so technically there's a 1 that's there. 54 divided by 9 is going to be 6. And then negative 243 divided by 9 is negative 27. All right, and then of course that's all equal to zero. Okay, well now what you have to do is just factor. Okay, and this is when you have those two sets of parentheses. Notice I keep bringing my GCF on the outside. I have my two sets of parentheses. This sign right here tells me whether or not I have same or different signs. If it's a minus sign, that means that I have different signs in my two sets of parentheses. X squared, I'm going to put my X's on the left. And then I'm trying to find two things that would multiply together that would give me 27, but add up to a positive 6. And that positive 6 is important there because it's going to tell you which number needs to be bigger. Okay? So again, you can start listing some factors of 27. Well, obviously you have 1 and 27, and then you have 3 and 9, and pretty much that's about it. Okay? So you're trying to figure out which one or which one of those two numbers or factors is going to help you get to a positive 6. Well, positive 27 and negative 1, that's going to be a positive 26. Positive 1 and a negative 27 is going to be a negative 26, so that's not really going to help us. Okay? Well, then you have 9 and 3. A positive 9 and a negative 3, that will give us a positive 6x. So if you put a positive 9, a negative 3, you've had this factored, okay? And most people would get to this step and they would think that they're done and they would say, oh, my answers are supposed to be a positive 9 and a negative 3 and of course they have that answer right here. Oh, sorry, right here. Well, that's not correct, okay? Because now what you have to do is set your two portions equal to 0. So you have x plus 9 equals 0, solve that equation, and then you have x minus 3 equals 0, and solve that equation. You subtract 9 from both sides because that's the way you get rid of addition and you'd have x equals negative 9. You add 3 on both sides you'd have x equals a positive 3. So these two numbers are what your answer should be. So what your answer really should be is C. And again on these end of course tests they'll put the perfect wrong answer like B there just to make sure you understand what you're doing but whenever it says which of the values make the equation true you're trying to and it has a set equal to zero well that's what you're going to do at the end you can set these equal to zero another way a nice easy way that you could do this problem is you can just take your numbers and plug them in to make sure that they work out so you don't necessarily have to remember how to do these factoring type problems because it asks you what the value of x is so if it gives you these two values for your x you can technically just plug them into the equation and see if it'll equal zero like it says so literally plug in our answer that we got we ended up getting the, po the negative 9 and a positive 3 well I'm gonna choose to plug in I'm gonna choose to plug in 3 into this equation first. Okay, so I'm going to go put my calculator in normal mode here and then I'm going to plug in my first x value. I'm only going to plug in the 3. I'm not going to worry about plugging in my negative 9. I'm just going to plug in 3. So if I have 9 times 3 squared and again this caret means that I'm raising it to the second power plus 54, parenthesis, again, notice I'm going to put the same number that I'm trying to plug in, 3, and then minus 243. I should get out 0, and when I press enter, 
I get out zero. So that's one of my answers. That's one of my x values that makes this true. Okay. Well, then I can plug in negative 9 and do the exact same thing. I can do 9 times negative 9 squared plus 54 times nine, negative 9 minus 243 enter and again we got zero so I said like I said you can take these numbers and you can just plug them in into this problem to make sure that you get out zero and that's an easier way to do this another way that you can do this problem is you can just plug this into your y equals so if you press y equals and put in this equation of 9x squared plus 54x minus 243 and then we are looking for values that are going to make this equation be at zero so if we have our x and our y axis we want to know where this is going to be at zero also known as our roots okay well if you look at this again this is going up by one two three that's where one of our roots is going to end up being right here at three and then another one of our roots is going to end up being down here at negative 9. So that's another one of where our roots is going to end up being. And if you look at it, you can kind of remember this as thinking, oh, this is all my soil, so where are my roots going to sprout out from my y-axis, or from my x-axis? And you can see that you're going to have some coming out here at 3 and some coming out here at negative 9. So that's another easy way to do this problem. Good luck.